So today we're actually going to be going sort of backwards and we're going to be talking about chapter five, which is photosynthesis. Uh, very interestingly, photosynthesis is what gives us the appropriate nutrients that we need to go into cellular respiration. So we should have gone photosynthesis then cellular respiration. But we're sort of going to go backwards with this one. A photosynthesis, um, sunshine plays an actual bigger role in our life than you actually may think. All the food that we eat and the fossil fuels we burn are products of photosynthesis. The plants turn solar energy into food and then the animals eat the plants and other animals and that the original solar energy is passed along this food chain. So it goes from the sun to the plant, then to the animal, and then to us, the sort of the final recipients. We can actually bypass um, a lot of the, um, the animals sometimes just by eating plants. We eat salads all the time. So we are actually gaining a lot of um, energy from just eating the plants itself. We're skipping a step. Photosynthesis is actually the process that converts solar energy into chemical energy that is used by all biological systems. So that means us. So the sun uses its energy and in, in the plants we have chloroplasts which convert water and carbon dioxide into the sugar, oxygen, and water. Now you're going to hear the word sugar being used and that's actually interchangeable. We're going to use it as glucose. So when I talk about sugar here, we're talking about the glucose molecule, which if you may recall, when we talked about cellular respiration, glucose is what drives cellular respiration. So photosynthesis actually occurs in three major events. Sunlight is actually converted into the chemical energy, that's step one. Then water is split into two oxygen, into an oxygen atom. And then the carbon dioxide is actually fixed into the sugar. The sugar molecule being glucose, and glucose being C6H12O6. You'll notice that uh, the photosynthesis reaction is actually very quite similar, but it's actually the opposite. So photosynthesis is we take six uh, carbon dioxide molecules, 12 water molecules plus sunlight, and we net a glucose molecule, a water molecule, and an oxygen molecule. Now, in cellular respiration, it's actually the opposite. We take that glucose molecule plus water and we use uh, energy to create, and our byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. So they're common, kind of the opposite of each other. So in photosynthesis, like I said, we have six carbon dioxide molecules, 12 water molecules, one sugar or glucose molecule, and then six water molecules as our byproduct, and then again, six oxygen molecules. Photosynthesis is actually carried out by a wide range of plants. So we actually have certain bacteria actually will photosynthesize. Certain plants, uh, most plants will photosynthesize. Algae as well. Algae is found in the ocean. Cyanobacteria. Phytoplankton um, is all over the ocean. And that's actually how we produce most of um, the energy we need from phytoplankton. Uh, these organisms are known as photoautotrophs or producers meaning they make their own food and energy from the sun. And then consumers such as herbivores and carnivores depend on the products of photosynthesis that producers make to live. Uh, a lot of the animals in the animal kingdom just eat plants. That's what provides them with the nutrients that they need. Glucose, uh, glucose is C6H1206, is a sugar molecule. And its molecule structure looks like that. It's a six carbon uh, molecule. During photosynthesis, plants produce glucose molecules when they convert light energy into chemical energy. The chemical energy is stored in the bonds of the glucose molecules. Plants produce sugar, sugars as a source of food. However, they produce way more than they actually need to survive. This is actually a great benefit for all the species that depend on glucose for energy. So plants also use that uh, glucose for energy, but they just do not need it. Uh, the way that we need it and actually it just produces an abundance of it and so we use it for our energy source. Plants use the glucose they produce for energy. When plants produce excess glucose they store in their leaves. Animals digest plants. They break down the glucose bonds to really store energy in their bodies and then all biological energy comes from glucose. So every animal in the animal kingdom that eats a plant is actually eating glucose molecules. 
Why do plants make glucose and what is it in plants uh, do with the glucose? Glucose molecules can break down apart, uh, can be broken apart for energy for to power reactions. Plants can be can make the glucose into carbohydrates, uh, chains called polysaccharides, poly meaning many, saccharides meaning carbohydrates. Glucose is a simple sugar because it's only the smallest unit of a carbohydrate. A glucose is actually a monosaccharide, uh, meaning it has a one chain uh, of saccharides. And then there are two polysaccharides in plants. So we have cellulose and starch. Cellulose is, compo is a, the component of the cell wall. And then starch uh, is a long-term energy store that the plants use uh, later. And they're actually uh, the same chemical, but they are just isomers of each other. They are uh, opposites of each other. As you see in cellulose, all the CH2OHs are on the top, and then on in starch molecule, all the CH2OHs are opposites of each other. And then you'll notice that each one of them contains a glucose molecule. So each atom can be traveled, uh, can be traced through the photosynthesis reaction. So each letter stands for the element of the atom in which it uh, is made of. So the letter C is an atom of carbon. So we have six carbon molecules, 12 hydrogen molecules, or six, 12 water molecules, my apologies, sunlight, um, oxygen molecules uh, are present as well. So as carbon molecules has one, uh, a carbon molecule has one carbon and two oxygen atoms. So if a six carbon dioxide molecules are used, there are six carbon atoms and 12 oxygen atoms. A water molecule has two hydrogens and one oxygen atom. So if there are 12 hydrogen uh, water molecules, there's 24 hydrogens and 12 uh, total oxygens. So the sunlight provides the energy for the reaction. One molecule of glucose has six carbons, 12 hydrogens and six oxygen atoms. So if you count every atom before and after the reaction, they are all balanced out. So uh, the chloroplast, uh, through evolution, plant cells, uh, certain bacteria and some algae have acquired chloroplast to help carry out photosynthetic reactions. Chloroplasts are plastids or plant cell organelles. Uh, chloroplasts are full rounded flattened discs called thylakoids. And there's a picture of a chloroplast right there. Um, a stack of thylakoids is also, also known as a granum. A stroma is the space inside the chloroplasts. And then chloroplasts were the, is where the photosynthesis actually occurs. So, so uh, where did the chloroplasts actually come from? So we actually talked about this with the mitochondrion. Um, it has the same storyline as the chloroplasts. So a very long time ago, plant cells were once ancient eukaryotic cells that had enveloped a cyanobacteria. Eventually, the cyanobacteria became part of the cell and, the de and they depended upon it for life, which in turn gave the cell the ability to photosynthesize. This is known as the endosymbiotic theory. Um, the same thing happened with the mitochondria. So a plant cell engulfed the cyanobacteria and noticed that it actually produced power. So it just decided to keep it along with itself. Um, keep it along with inside of itself. And then they just started to develop together. That's the same thing that happened with the mitochondria. A animal cell developed or enveloped this um, mitochondria, which was an aerobic prokaryote, and actually noticed, hey, it's giving me power. So the same thing happened with a chloroplast. So there are many reasons why scientists believe this is a theory. One is that chloroplasts have their own DNA, which is different from plant DNA, but similar to bacterial DNA. It's the same thing as the mitochondria again. The mitochondria has its own DNA separate from the animal cells DNA. <clears throat> so cyanobacteria today, uh, cyan actually comes from the Greek word of cyanin, which means aqua colored. Not all bacteria that undergo photosynthesis are cyanobacteria, but all cyanobacteria are photosynthetic. Bacteria, meaning purple algae or purple bacteria, are not cyanobacteria, but were the first bacteria discovered that can actually photosynthesize. Cyanobacteria undergo photosynthesis in lakes, ponds, and oceans, uh, but they actually lack a chloroplasts. So, 
Photosynthesis in plants happens in the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts are full of thylakoid stacked in granum. The thylakoid membranes are lined by pigments such as chlorophyll and carotenoids. Chlorophyll is a green pigment and is the most abundant. A chlorophyll absorbs all wavelength colors except for green, which is reflected off, giving plants their green appearance. So the reason we see a plant as green is because that's actually the, what's actually being reflected. Uh, so green is actually what is reflected, and that's what we see in our eyes, that wavelength. The pigments harvest light energy packets called photons when they absorb uh, energy. Photosynthesis uh, occurs in two main steps. One is known as the light reaction. The other one is known as the dark reaction. Light reaction means it, it requires light. The dark reaction means it does not actually require any light. So in the light reaction or light dependent reaction, uh, captured light energy to power photosynthesis, light reaction occurs only during the daytime. So this, this actually takes place in the actual thylakoid. Pigments in the thylakoid membrane form protein complexes called photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Uh, these photosystems harvest photons to charge up energy carrying molecules that will power the dark reactions. And it's very interesting, um, photosystem 2 is actually what occurs first over photosynthesis, photosystem 1. It's just that photosystem 1 was discovered first. So the dark reactions are light independent reactions do not need light to power their reactions and can occur during day or night. This was discovered uh, by three different scientists. The dark reaction is also known as the Cal uh, Calvin Benson Basham cycle, or, but we usually just call it the Calvin cycle. The dark reaction occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast, which is the space that surrounds the thylakoid and carbon fixation or carbon dioxide is actually fixed into glucose in this spot. So energy carrying molecules, which are NATP, which we've already heard of, adenosine triphosphate, and NAD+, both are energy carrying molecules used in photosynthesis and cellular respiration. ATP is called a cellular currency because it's used to power all the reactions that take place in the cell of all living things. When ATP's third phosphate is broken off, it's released, uh, it releases energy that and the cells can use. ATP is made up when a third phosphate group is added to ATP, which is diphosphate. Nicotinamide adenine, adenine dinucleotide phosphate is a very complex molecule. Um, you just call it NAD+. So in the light reaction, uh, the energy absorbed by the chlorophyll during the light reaction is used to power photosystem 2 that breaks the bonds of water absorbed through the plant's roots. So here we go, we just broke apart the uh, water molecule and now we have just the oxygen molecule. Uh, freed oxygen atoms bind to each other to form the gas oxygen, so O2. O2 is a byproduct of photosynthesis not used by the plants, so it's released through the, stro uh, the stoma, the stomata of the plants. Stomata is actually Greek for mouth. These are little pores in the leaves that open and close to let oxygen out and carbon dioxide in. So this is how plants produce the oxygen that we need to live every day. So here you see the oxygen escaping. So when molecule, the water molecule breaks apart, the remaining two hydrogen atoms have a positive charge and these are called protons. These protons are kept inside the thylakoid by the thylakoid membrane. When there are more protons inside the thylakoid than in the stroma outside, protons want to leave the crowded thylakoid. So here we have a whole bunch of proton molecules, so hydrogen molecules. When the protons or hydrogen molecules cross the membrane to leave, a protein uses their passage to power ATP production. So as the hydrogen molecules leave, uh, the thylakoid space, ATP synthase, which is the ATP maker, will actually bind the third uh, phosphate group to ADP, making it ATP. So like I said, the protein ATP synthesis synthase attaches to the phosphate group of ADP, making it ATP now. So now we go into photosystem one. Uh, in photosystem one, uh, the light energy absorbed by chlorophyll also powers photosystem 1 that uh, charges up the energy carrying molecule NAD plus into NADPH. 
So energy pH then carries his energy over to the power, the dark cycle, or the Calvin cycle. So just a brief overview of the light reaction. Light, um, we have photons are absorbed by the pigments to power photosystem 1 and 2. Photosystem 2 splits water molecules into two protons and oxygen atoms, and oxygen is expelled through the stomata. Protons crowd the thylakoid membrane and power proteins to complex ATP synthase to make ATP. ND plus is powered by the photosystem 1 to make NADPH to be used in the dark reactions. So the light independent reaction finishes with charged NADPH, ATP, and oxygen being released. So here you see the whole animation taking place. Oxygen is left. ATP synthase uses the hydrogen protons and then it powers ATP synthase, which makes ATP. Photosystem two or photosystem one converts NADP plus into NADPH. So in the dark reaction, also known as the Calvin cycle, the dark reaction, um, it's called a cycle because it starts and ends with the same product, hence the term cycle. All the dark reaction takes place in the stroma in the chloroplasts. The Calvin cycle starts with RUBP molecule and carbon dioxide molecule. An enzyme called Rubisco combines them into an unstable protein. RUPP is the starting molecule and the ending molecule of the Calvin cycle. It will be remade at the end of the Calvin cycle uh, as it begins again. So this reaction takes place, takes, uh, this is the reason plants take in carbon dioxide to start the carb, uh, Calvin cycle and begin the conversion of RUPP into glucose. Since the intermediate of combined RUPP and CO2 are unstable, it quickly splits in half and forms two molecules called 3PGA, which are stable. So a summary of the dark reaction is the Calvin cycle converts the carbon from carbon dioxide into glucose in the stroma. This is known as carbon fixation um, because this is where carbon is fixed into another form. Photosynthesis is carried out in two steps. First, the light the two light dependent photosystems. Second is the light depend independent carbon fixation cycle called the carbon cycle. Through this process, the plant is able to convert sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide into glucose or a sugar molecule and ATP. As a byproduct of this process, oxygen is also released. So just some key terms for you guys to remember. We have autotropes. These produce their own food via photosynthesis or chemical energy as their environment. Then we have heterotrophs which rely on other organisms, uh, the autotrophs and the other heterotrophs for survival. These are unable to produce their own food. Carnivores are heterotrophs. And then uh, the chloroplast. The chloroplast is the, the organelle of photosynthesis in plants and some protists. The thylakoid membrane is um, the chloroplast highly folded inner membrane system, forms a continuous uh, compartment in the stroma. And then the stroma is a semi fluid matrix between the thylakoid membrane and the two outer membranes of the chloroplasts. So uh, the site of photosynthesis is actually taking place in the chloroplasts within the thylakoid membrane. And then the stomata, these are the tiny pores that close and conserve water. When they open, they allow the gas exchange uh, between the plant's internal tissues and air. The exchange is required for photosynthesis. So the stoma, Stomata is actually where oxygen escapes from.